We were doing a holiday show and I thought how easy it would be to be able to go online, pay $5 and buy a chair and be able to paint it and be able to have it in the house for extra seating around the kitchen table. So here is a sad little chair and literally we got them for $5 a piece. And rightly so, it's not really great looking, it's kind of sad, the fabric is really ugly and I thought, okay, I have an opportunity here to be able to show people how to rescue, restore, and redecorate an ugly, sad little chair. There was a lot of shellac on top of that chair, but I didn't have to go in and do any sanding on it. Um, I, I just made sure that I cleaned it very well, and I put on two coats of Frankly Scarlet, which is a really beautiful, bright red um, one-step paint. And I came back with some light wax. Now, we'll tell you, this is a really, really important thing to learn, and let me go over that with you. So, we have several different waxes, and I saw a question earlier about dark wax and um, when to use it. So, I think I may have a dark wax over there. Um, you always, always, always have to use light antique wax first. Part of the whole reason when I was creating these waxes is the fact that there's a, there's a purpose for every product and how you use them. And you never, ever want to use the dark wax by itself. Never. The only reason I created the dark wax was to be able to add detail and some age to a piece. So the, really the first thing you're going to do is you're going to use the light antique wax. And some people may say, well, I thought she told us that we didn't have to use wax. You don't have to seal it if you don't want to. This is strictly an option. But you'll notice with the light antique wax, it's a combination of carnauba and um, beeswax. The beeswax is what gives us the beautiful color when we're wanting to go into an aging process. If you don't want to, you can very well use the clear wax. On the china cabinet that I did, all I did was use clear wax. I wasn't going to go back in and age it, so it was a very clean, finish. The only reason I did put wax on it was because I knew that it was going to get a whole lot of use and that I didn't want to have to go back in and clean it with Windex or anything like that later if there were fingerprints on it. So on this chair I've actually come in and I've put a coat of the light antique wax on it. But I want to show you how to do that first. So I want you to take, I love the, these round hog hair brushes. They're great for applying wax because you can literally apply the light wax in a third of the time. So you're going to come on top of the piece like this. And a lot of times when I'm applying wax, I'm making sure that I'm cross hatching it and feathering it out. It is 100% coverage. So I want you to go over the entire piece with the light antique wax first. Now, here's where we talk about tack. Tack and understanding when things are dry enough to be able to go to the next step. This is very, very important. If you're going to put the light antique wax on and you do want to add the dark wax, your tack is going to be very, very important. And you may go, okay, so what does she mean by tack? If I put the, if I put the wax on right after you do, I want you to feel of it. You're going to see how it's moving around and how it's greasy. You've got to allow it to come to tack after about 15 or 20 minutes. That allows you to be able to start putting the dark wax on because if I put it on too quickly, if I apply the dark wax before it's come to tack, it's literally going to make a third color. So here I'm going to take, you see I've changed brushes. I used the light antique wax in my round hog hair. That's great to be able to apply it all over my, my surface. But when I switch over to dark wax, I want to use the china bristle brush. Do not use the round hog hair brush on your dark wax. It's going to put on too much. And you've got to be able to control the surface area that you're going to be using this dark wax on. So look how I loaded up my brush. See how I'm putting on a little bit more than I would actually use because now I'm going to take a piece of cardboard and I'm literally going to offload it. See how much comes off? I don't ever want to go from the dark wax to my piece of furniture. I want to load it up and then offload it. Then that way I've got more control. So now I'm going to come back. 
I've, I'm happy with the tack. I like how it feels. And now I'm going to do like a butterfly kiss. I'm just going to touch it. And I'm going to gradually start to see the detail start to show up on my piece. So again, what's the whole point of the dark wax? Is to show a little bit of age, of detail, of raised areas, and it will warm a color up considerably on a piece, but I want to make sure that I don't overdo it. So I don't know with the camera if you can, how well you can see that. It's always best to add a little bit and then build it up. I don't want to put too much on in the very beginning. Okay, so now I'm going to let that come to tack and before I buff it. With the dark wax, it's probably going to take maybe 40 minutes or so to be able to completely dry before I buff it. And I want you to buff it with a lint-free rag, kind of like you would buff a shoe. That way you're going to get a pretty little sheen on it and you're going to be really happy with the detail that you have. Now, do we have a final picture of a chair uh, to be able to show them what this looks like? Now, look at the seat. I didn't want to have to um, paint the seat red and just stay that way. I wanted to be able to add some detail to it. Now, if you'll notice, there's no way that you can go online and see all the different projects that are going on that people are doing without seeing Tartan and Madras. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun to be able to take some burlap and paint it and put it on my chair? So that's what I did. And I want to walk you through the process because every piece of fabric that you paint is going to be different. The consistency of the water that you're going to add to it is going to be different. Um, and I want to be able to show you, basically, this is what the chair seat looked like. Now, I did paint it red first. But I knew that that wasn't going to be very pretty. So I thought, you know what would be fun? is to take the burlap and I'm going to paint the burlap and put it on top of the red cushion and that way it would give it some detail and I could see the red peeking through the actual burlap. So I wanted to be able to cut up some pieces of burlap and I'm going to walk you through this process. If you're going to be painting fabric, it's really a nice tip to mist the fabric first before you actually start painting it. That opens up the fiber of the cloth that you're going to be painting and know that every different kind of fabric is going to be different. Some people will say, what kind of fabric should I not paint? I really would be careful about going into mohairs and really high napped velvets. We need to be really careful with that. But the best ones are like cottons and chintzes um, and really heavy duty uh, linens. Those are some of my favorite ones to work on. So. One of the first things you want to do after you've um, actually painted the seat with the red, I put on two coats because reds will have a tendency to bleed a little bit more. They'll be more sheer. So you're going to have to put just a little bit more paint on. It's very, very important when you're mixing your paint to paint fabric to add about 20% water to it. Now, different fabrics are going to accept differently. So a lot of times we will sand the fabric with 400 grit sandpaper. That allows it to get smoother again and then we do wax it. A lot of people are like, well, is the wax not gonna come off on my clothes? No, the wax will get harder and it will dry harder. Remember again when I told you the light antique wax, what did it have in it? It had carnauba wax. Carnauba wax is used on bowling alleys. So the harder it dries, the longer it's there, the harder the surface. So it's literally, if you're doing some kitchen cabinets, I mean some, some kitchen chairs, and you're painting the seats of them, you can lightly sand them and then wax them, and it takes it again to be where it's real supple. And you can literally have it to where children can eat in there, and you can just wipe it off with some Windex or some soap and water. So. To be able to show you kind of how we did this design, we started with just regular burlap. Um, you can go to a fabric store and a lot of the A stores actually carry different fabrics that you can see if they have burlap. So the first thing that we did, I will tell you the inspiration that I got this from. 
I had seen on Pinterest there was a carpet and it was hanging on the wall and I saw this pattern and I thought, number one, I love the color combination. It's black, ballet white, and frankly scarlet red. And I thought, I could recreate that on the seat of these chairs that I'm doing. So the first thing I did, and you'll notice this on your drop down, I just taped off kind of a cross or a T. And so this area where you see this is taped off, this gives me a beautiful straight edge. And I'm going to come in, you know what, I didn't plan on this, but this is one of the benefits of, of being live. I want to just show you how I do this. So make sure you shake the pot up really, really well. And because this burlap is really grainy, we used the hog hair brush. I'm going to dip this down in here. And I'm going to pounce this on this fabric. It's probably best not to try to brush it on. So the stippling action of put this, putting this on, can you see that? So that way the burlap is actually going to be very, very porous. It's going to dry very, very quickly and it's going to soak down in there. So then I'm going to allow that to dry. I want to show you what it looks like. So this is what it looks like after I've applied my first coat of the white that you see here on, um, on my chair seat. So I'm going to take um, this next area here that I want to be able to come in and add these stripings. All I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my tape. This is, now it's very important, you'll notice it's not just a regular masking tape. This is a painter's tape. So the tack on it is going to be much more um, heavy duty. So you'll see where I cut it in half and literally lay down two pieces of tape here so I had smaller stripes. So I just painted the black directly on top of it where it looks like this. So I'm going to take this tape off so that way you can see what it looks like. I want you to be able to use your imagination. Um, you don't have to use the black and the red and the white. I just love the color combination of these on the burlap itself. So now you'll notice here when I'm touching this it's really rough. On the burlap I made sure that I thinned the paint to 50%. So it was one part paint to one part water because different fabrics are going to be different. As a rule, you can thin the, the one step paint 20, 15 to 20% at the most, but on this, I wanted to make sure that it was a little bit thinner. And that's pretty, pretty common with burlap. So then when I got to the point of laying out uh, my two bands on this seat, I wanted to be able to come in and add the red. So you'll see here how I just taped it off really thin and just made an eighth of an inch stripe with my tape. Can you see that? And so now I'm going to come inside of that with my red paint. Since it's so small, I'm just going to stay with a china bristle brush, but I am going to stipple it. And it's good too, while this is while this is still kind of um, damp, after you put this on, I want you to take the tape up. I'm not going to do the whole thing for the sake of time. And you do need to be careful because the weave, especially when you're working on burlap and painting it, it gives. So I'm trying to stay away from the end of it so that way I can show you what this little stripe looks like. Isn't that pretty? I just love the color combination with them together. 
So now then after I had done that small stripe, I came back and I thought, you know, this is part of the whole process of being creative and when you're doing projects. And it's like, I think I'll add a little bit more red. So I wanted to come in and add these four stripes here. So I just strictly came back with my, my tape and laid it out to where I had these tiny little eighth inch lines and I'll paint those and then take my tape off and it looks like this. Now, one thing that I will say is a caveat. When you touch this, it is going to be kind of rough. So I want you to come back with 400 grit sandpaper and I want you to lightly sand over where you painted. And then I want you to do a light application of clear wax. Um, and the only reason you're having to do the wax is because it just is going to make it a little bit softer and easier to be able to sit on. So um, then I laid it over the red, as you can see, and it allowed it to be able to kind of peek through that burlap. You know, the other thing is too, and I've noticed a lot of people making placemats and uh, place settings and towels and things that you can use the one-step chalk-based paint on painting burlap, not just on seats, but on a lot of different projects. Please stay in touch with us on social media and know that it's your turn now to take this knowledge and go enjoy the bragging rights.